you know, if you're in the Twitter space, which most people in crypto are nowadays, um, you see a lot of dot ETH handles or dot ETH domains as, as they call them, you know, on their Twitter names. Is there any, you know, similarities or differences or nuances between ADA handle and dot ETH? So this, uh, this is actually a, uh, a pretty big conversation we've had in the past. Um, and we've actually, uh, I actually was on a couple of calls with, um, one of the founders of uh, ENS, uh, Brantley, and, and we've talked through this uh, a couple of times. The reality is, you know, this new paradigm that we are building, Web3, shouldn't have a defined avenue for naming solutions, right? Like, d ENS is successful. They were the first to provide a naming solutions in the form of domain names, but that doesn't mean it's the one that's the end all version of a naming solution that can be successful or even what's best for blockchain technology, right? So defining a naming solution that's successful doesn't have to start at the domain level, which we haven't. The cool thing about handles and the cool thing about the Cardano blockchain is that each handle is native to the Cardano blockchain. So it starts almost as at the base level of the chain, right? And so if we entrench a standard via free market, right? We didn't we didn't go the CIP route. If we do it via free market and we entrench a standard that everybody, you know, respects and abides by, we've then created an identification layer at almost ground level. And the the layers you can build on top of that can include things like domains. So you can build that, you know, as a composable layer. Um, so it's just in our point of view is building and establishing a standard at the very, um, the very base layer and building on top of that. So at some point, yeah, we could definitely take the route of going through domains uh, or the domain route. And, you know, that's where we could see some possible interactions and interoperability with ENS um, and even unstoppable domains. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, the way that you guys designed uh, A to Handle does speak to that. You know, it's it's layer one and that can only be done on Cardano. You know, for right. people that don't know uh, Cardano native assets, NFTs, they're all layer one. You know, you, you right. meant them with the protocol by creating a transaction. You know, you're not using any layer two contract and, um, you know, you can't do that on Ethereum. You know, you would have right. to essentially build that layer two. Right. So the, the cool thing as well, like a part of that, an extension of that is because handles are NFTs, right? You own them. The user owns them, right? On ENS, they're domain names and they interact the way that you would interact with a Web2 domain name. You pay rent on those, right? You don't technically own those. So on ENS, let's say, you know, years into the future, right? Like you're, um, let's go into the, the metaverse world, right? Like, let's say you're, you're playing a World of Warcraft version of, of the metaverse, right? And you're some prolific character and you're using your e .eth name or your handle, right? And some, you're, you're some amazing PvP player, right? Everybody knows you. Only the handle user will be able to extract that value via monetary means and be able to... Uh, be able to sell that or, or, you know, like I said, extract that value. Whereas in .eth, they don't own it, right? Like as a dot ha as a handle uh, owner, there's history to your name and, and there's data that proves it. And I'm sure um, at some point, like, you know, blockchain games will um, have history run through those names and you'll be able to see verified um, history within each handle. And only, only a handle, you can extract that value since you actually own your name. And you own the value of that name. Yeah, that's um, it's very interesting. I've never thought about that. You know, for example, I have you know multiple domain domain names at this point, and I do have to pay rent on them. And there really is no ownership, you know, to them right. because I have to keep paying that. Whereas, you know, an NFT in my wallet, you know, no one can take that for me unless they have my private keys. Right. You know, so that is a a very valuable nuance, I, I think, and I appreciate that. 
Um, so what does this look like from the user perspective? You know, we've already mentioned it a little bit, you know, because we stated that it's an NFT. So then, you know, for users that don't hold any NFTs, NFTs on the Cardano blockchain are just sent to normal addresses. You know, the ADDR1 address, the same way that you would withdraw ADA from an exchange, you can get sent an NFT from one of your friends or from a centralized website, and then you have it in your wallet. So, you know, once we've gotten that out of the way, people understand NFTs, you know, what does the NFT look like in their wallet? And then how does a user actually, you know, benefit from having this ADA handle NFT in their wallet? So again, so I can't remember if I mentioned this off camera or on camera, but a lot of the way that handles are integrated into specific protocols fall onto the protocols themselves. So how it would actually look on a UI and a UI UX perspective would be up to the protocol. I can only speak to the ones who we've seen um, integrations already, which would be NAMI Wallet and Sunday Swap. NAMI Wallet would be the one who's running currently on mainnet. And basically the asset lives in a part of the wallet or the address attached to the wallet. Um, and within the search bar, when you send, you can either type in um, the address of the person you are sending an asset to, or you can type in their associated handle, and the back end of, of NAMI takes care of routing your payment or your asset to that handle owner. And so, and that's for a wallet, right? So if you look at Sunday Swap, if you participated in the Sunday Swap testnet, um, they had a cool surprise for everybody where they had handles integrated into their front end. So, you know, just that's just a UI perspective change, right? Like you log in and you, you want to do some swaps on Sunday Swap. Instead of being identified by a moniker of, you know, alphanumeric hashes, you're identified by a moniker of your choosing, right? Like your handle is displayed in the top right and it gives you a sense of personality, a sense of self. Um, and so, so we'll be able to see as, as more protocols go live on mainnet, we'll be able to see and interpret all sorts of different variations of how the handle standard is entrenched, um, which is super exciting for us. Um, but how a user interacts with it will be mostly up to how the protocols themselves um, integrate us.